I decided to make a 60 foot long slip and slide and tie it to the back of a UTV. I mean really, what could possibly go wrong? Why would I do such a thing? To test out Isaac Newton's first law of motion. That's right, no running and jumping onto this slip and slide. My accomplice would put the pedal to the floor and let the UTV and the slip and slide do all the work. The tow rope would unwind as the vehicle sped up and then POW! I contemplated all the different ways this could go wrong and tried to pick a flat smooth section of lawn in an effort to avoid road rash. But what was the outcome going to be once the rope snapped tight? Would I get towed along like a low riding charioteer? Would I actually start to slide backwards in the opposite direction? Or would I stay mostly in the same place? Well, I knew Isaac Newton's first law shed some light on the expected result, but I wanted to test and see what would actually happen. You see, Isaac Newton's first law, also known as the law of inertia, basically just says that objects tend to keep on doing whatever they're already doing. And the more mass they have, the more they resist a change in their motion. But would his theory hold up in the real world, or would there be other forces at work that I hadn't counted on? Alright, here we go! Three, two, one, go! It was one of the fastest slip and slide rides I've ever gone on and yet I only moved a few feet relative to the ground. You see, Newton's first law states that an object that is resting will stay resting unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. By covering the slip and slide in soap and water, I minimized the friction force between myself and the plastic. As a result, my body resisted a change in its motion and really just moved a little bit. Now you're probably thinking I would stop there, but no, I just had to take it to the next level. Maybe you've seen that little trick where someone pulls a tablecloth out from under some dishes, and the dishes are at rest so they stay almost motionless if someone pulls the tablecloth out fast enough. Of course, I had to go next level, so I upped the ante and decided I would pull the entire tabletop off the table, rather than just a piece of cloth. I detached the table surface from the stand and attached it to the tow rope. I figured I'd put my breakfast on the line first and see what would happen. Now notice how the cup and the plate did move to the right a little bit. This is because the unbalanced force of friction did apply a small force on the dishes. And of course, if I hadn't been quick about catching the plate, the unbalanced force of gravity would have taken over and moved the plate down to the ground. But I wasn't done yet. I figured it was time to put it all on the table for science, and you got it. I was going on the table myself. So there you have it, the first part of Newton's first law in effect. Objects at rest stay at rest unless an unbalanced force moves them. Have a great day, and as always, stay curious, my friends. Okay, we're gonna do this. Oh, so I gotta lean back just a tiny bit more. <laughs> <laughs>